Well, again, thank you for coming. Um, I do have a few things I want to um, share today uh, as I've visited with the family about some memories they wanted to convey to you. And uh, so uh, I thank family members who gathered with me the other day. It was wonderful being, being with you. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to talk about the, all the incredible accomplishments of Ben Steele because that's been covered. And so for the next few minutes, I just want to talk about uh, Ben the man and Ben the child, Ben the father and husband, Ben the member of the church I pastor, First United Methodist Church, and Ben the Christian who knew and extended forgiveness. And I want to talk about Ben, the Ben I knew who was constantly turning stories around to ways that would make me smile or most often laugh, laugh as he did with most of us here. I had numerous times with Ben when we would both be laughing so hard, tears would be running down our cheeks, and uh, we delight, I delight in those times. And I don't know how you might describe Ben Steele. We've heard from a number of folks today already uh, who've given their tributes, and I have to tell you, I found him to be one of the finest gentlemen, the kindest persons one could know. And as I said, I found him to be hilariously funny at times with a wit. Just, just think of a one-word description that you would, how would you describe Ben Steele? And I'm going to count to three, and I just want us all to shout out that one-word description together in this place now. So on three, are, you, have it, you have the word? Okay, so on three, let's all say it out loud. One, two, three. Forgive him. I followed every word that you said. The wonder of Ben to me is that he meant so much to all of us uh, in our own way. And I know there are many ways to describe him, and I wouldn't be able to do so in the short time we have here. When Ben was born, Doc Bresnan, the doctor who, who delivered him, announced to the family, that is the ugliest baby I have ever seen. <laughs> that word got passed on to Ben later. And believe it or not, it always sort of bothered him. He would often ask, why would he say that? Uh, why indeed? And by the way, a few years later, the doctor saw Ben on the street and told him, you know, you're getting better looking. <laughs> As a child growing up on the ranch, uh, Ben attended school, some in town, also the country school. When he was in the country school, he'd often dream of being most anywhere but in that schoolhouse. And when Ben was in the second grade, his Aunt Josephine was the teacher. And most everyone called him Bud back then, as was already mentioned. And uh, his sister Gertrude came home one day to announce to the family, Bud just sits there in school. He's so dumb, she said. <laughs> but don't worry about him, she announced to the family. Someday he'll w wake up and realize just how dumb he is. Something wrong with Bud. He's not learning. He just sits there. Of course, what she didn't realize is that Bud was just doing some daydreaming of being anywhere but in that schoolhouse. In fact, as it turns out, Bud would ask to go to the outhouse, and instead of going directly to the outhouse, he would go directly to his horse and head home. Of course, we all know there was absolutely nothing wrong with Ben. He was probably just drawing some picture of wide open spaces in his mind and wanting to be there. For Ben's family, the way the common cold was cured out on the ranch was with a little whiskey. And in fact, a shot of whiskey seemed to work as a cure for most everything. But when Ben got scarlet fever, it was a different matter, and the doctor was needed to help with that. And when Ben was a little older, he and his brother Warren were digging a hole or something one day, and Ben had a hoe in his hand and was swinging with it swinging it with considerable might when suddenly Warren bent down right in front of the swinging hoe Ben was yielding, wielding. And the wound to Warren's head was severe and Ben got his bleeding brother to the house and his mother and father headed off on the long drive to the hospital uh, as soon as they could and Ben was left with a hired man and they heard nothing for some days. And during that time Ben actually thought that he might have killed his own brother. He was very concerned 
As it turns out, Warren uh, was fine. He healed up, and Warren would often joke about it later. He would laughingly say, well, if, it, if I hadn't been hit on the head, I could have become that professor, or I could have become famous, but Ben hit me with that hole. Ben's parents once bought him a new sheepskin coat, and on his way to school one day as he was wearing the coat, he discovered that he had caught a skunk in one of his uh, traps. Um, he didn't have a gun to kill the skunk, so he decided he would just hit it over the head. Not such a good idea. He stepped into the schoolhouse with his coat on and said, you'll never guess what I caught in my trap. <laughs> Not a lot of guessing required. His parents had to hang that sheepskin coat outside for months, hoping the odor would dissipate. I'm not sure it ever did. We've heard Ben's war years talked about already, so I want to skip ahead to, in years to Ben's, Ben the father. As a father, Ben loved to take his children camping. Rosemarie remembers uh, camping in Yellowstone Park every summer with her dad, and one time a, a bear raided the campground they were staying in, and, and daughter Julie and Ben's wife Shirley were actually sleeping in the car. But the other daughter, Rosemary and Ben, had set up a tent. And they were sleeping in that tent. And you have to understand, both of them were sound sleepers. And it turns out, the bear tore the entire camp site up. Everything but the tent. And Julie and Shirley woke up in the car. They were watching everything happening. Some other nearby campers were banging on things to scare the bear away. But Ben and Rosemary slept right through the entire thing. <laughs> Rosemary also remembers the time they were going through the park when she had her children along. And they got to Old Faithful, and someone said to Carrie, the granddaughter, have you ever seen this old geyser? And Carrie said, that's not an old geyser. That's my grandpa. <laughs> there are many great outdoor adventures that take up family memories. Ben was usually a camp cook when he would go camping. Occasionally he would let his grandchildren eat all the bacon before others could get any. And once when Shirley's sister and husband came for a visit, Ben, ben took them down the Bighorn in a canoe and it was Shirley's job to drive down the river to meet them. And while she was watching, uh, she saw her brother, uh, her brother-in-law stand up in the canoe which not, is not a good idea. And the canoe capsized, and Ben, who was in the back of the canoe, was completely soaked. Uh, son Sean remembers a time camping when another skunk came into the, uh, the tent with them. And uh, I guess it didn't, I didn't hear if there was any spraying that took place with that skunk that time, Sean. Ben liked to fly fish, took students with him uh, fly fishing. Once on the Madison in the middle of the uh, mayfly hatch, they were there, and the bugs were so thick, everyone was trying to swat them away and not swallow them, but those bugs didn't even phase Ben. He just kept, kept fishing away. Ben loved to hunt, too. He especially liked to go to the Eislein Ranch. Did I say it right? Eislein Ranch? Okay. One day when it was below zero, Ben was hunting, and he had taken a sandwich and a pickle and had put them in his pocket for the hunt. Well, when it came time for lunch, both the sandwich and the pickle were frozen solid. So Ben just built a fire to heat them up, and he told the folks at the ranch what he had done, and so after that, every time it would get really cold outside, they just called it pickle roasting weather. <laughs> you know, Ben loved to eat. He had uh, some rather unusual tastes when it came to food. Son-in-law Jim talks of his taking chip dip and putting it on uh, his sandwiches, and. Uh, his daughter Julie explained his favorite meal, though, was pork roast with homemade applesauce, followed by a good homemade apple pie. Now that sounds all right. I share that today because it seems Ben had just such a zest and zeal for life. But there was an, another side of Ben that I want to just uh, speak to briefly. Jesus once told a story about a man who decided a young man who decided to demand his inheritance from his father and leave home. This was one of Ben and Shirley's favorite Bible stories. In a very short time, this young man had squandered all that he had and he was living a life of desperation. In his stubborn rebellion, he ended up far away from home wanting to eat the scraps that were fed to the pigs. 
In the meantime, day after day, week after week, month after month, the father waited and watched and prayed for his son's return. The father kept watching and waiting for that son who was so far away from home. And one day off in the distance, the father saw a dot approaching. Could it possibly be? As he watched, he saw that dot was a man, and then he saw who it was. And with joy and love and excitement, the father ran to his son and threw his arms around the son's neck and kissed him, and then he threw a party for his son. The story is sometimes called the prodigal son, but it, it maybe should be called the story of a father's love. The story of the love of God. A God who, like that father in the story, is always willing to love and always willing to forgive us and a God who calls us to forgive others as well. We've already heard today a great deal about this word forgiveness. And any of us who knew Ben knew he was a wonderful human being. Certainly Ben followed the words of the scripture I read from Philippians, whatever is true and whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Ben put those verses into practice in his life, but it had not always been so. After the war and the horrors he encountered there, as we've already heard, he was eaten up by anger and bitterness and hate. But Ben made a conscious choice, a choice that is rooted in faith and in a good God and a forgiving God, a God that is described in the story of the prodigal son. Ben decided to forgive. I'm firmly convinced that it was in forgiveness that Ben was able to go forward in life and live it in such an abundance of positive drive and direction. Of course, a big part of that was surely his wife of great faith, who not only believes in the goodness of God and the forgiveness of God, but also believed in her Ben and encouraged him as well. As Christians today, we give thanks that we live and die in the grace of God. Grace means we don't have to be perfect and we can't be good enough to earn God's favor. Grace is a gift. Ben was not perfect in life. We are not pretending that he was. None of us are either. We're all in need of the grace that God alone supplies there's a scripture in Ephesians that tells us it is by grace that we are saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of our works, lest any one of us should boast. So now today, we give Ben over into eternity, into the hands of this God of grace. We commend him to a new place where there are no more tears in the darkness, no more trials, or heartaches or heartbreaks, a place where we soar on wings of eagles into the very presence of God. For now, Shirley and Julie and Rosemarie and Sean, all the family, we know you're going to miss Ben terribly and we will all grieve his passing, but we do not grieve this day as those who have no hope. In fact, we can truthfully celebrate Ben today and the promise of resurrection to eternal life. We give thanks today for Benjamin Charles Steele. We say thank you, God, for love and grace that holds us forever. Thanks be to God for a home in heaven that is prepared for Ben, for all who believe. Amen. Will you bow with me, please, for the commendation? Oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave Ben to us, so now we give him back to you. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. Raise him up with all your people. Receive us also and raise us into a new life. 
Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Into your hands, merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Ben. Acknowledge, we beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints of light. Amen. <laughs>